Hey everybody, this will be a tutorial video on how to make one of these. Um, this is a hidden maze box and I made it in Fusion 360. It's not hidden here very well because I printed it in a clear blue, but if you print it in anything else it's going to be quite difficult. Right now I can kind of see the tab but I've done it enough that I kind of know how to open it. It's still pretty difficult. Alright, so proof that it opens. Here it goes. There it is. So what we've got here is a tab. Oh, I can skip this part. This is a quick video of it opening here. Little tab there. And a few design principles before we get started into designing it. This tab has to be not on the very tip. Because if it is, if you have a, a channel in here on the inside that's too close to the edge, you can un you can get you could get it out without going through the maze. So you want it to this tab to be inset a little bit. Let me pause that video. Okay. Also, when you're building the maze, these first set of channels here. They can't be too high up here. Same reason. You don't want this too close to the edge. You don't want these too close to the edge. Otherwise, someone can just rip the maze open from any of these top slots. Right now, I've, I've designed it so there's no way to get it out without doing the maze correctly. If it's stuck right here, there's not enough wiggle room for it to open. Also, that is not closed. My my bottom line, you don't want the bottom line to be in the closed position. There's only one closed position. See, it's still open a little bit. And so that's another thing to think about. All right. On to the video. This is Fusion 360, and I am fairly new, probably two, three months into learning Fusion 360. So if I can learn this... Uh, not too not too hard for you to learn it either. Alright, so first I'm starting off with a sketch. I'm going to make this 30... I should open this box. I'm going to make it 30 millimeters on the inner diameter. And what we do is we cut a hole out of this circle. I'm just going to do that with a square and then trim that piece off. The cool thing about Fusion 360 is a sheet metal tab. Uh, we don't want to use the extrude function, we want to use the flange function. And with the flange function, on the lower right here it says sheet metal rule in this flange tab. Um, don't have to worry about the thickness there because you can modify the sheet metal rule um, down under that tab, modify. And that's what I'll do afterwards. But side one and side two, side one goes out from the diameter of that circle, side two goes in. So um, I'm going out, so I'm picking side one and I'm making it three millimeters thick and you'll see that modify, switch that thickness to three. All right, so sheet metal, you can unfold, modify, and then refold. As long as you don't combine it with other bodies. So if you turn it into a body, or if you turn it into a component that's not a sheet metal component, it won't refold. So every time I adjust the sheet metal after it's flattened out, make sure down here on operation, you click on join. So before you can unfold this piece, you have to have something flat as a reference point to unfold it. So right here, I'm just taking this edge extruding at half a millimeter so it'll have something to unfold against. There it is. Unfold, refold, unfold. All right. Now that's the outside. Unless I've... Oh, no, I turned it around. This is the inside now. And it's just a little test to see which way it's going to go. All right. So, see, I extruded a circle, refolded it, made sure I pushed join with that circle and then it'll push it to the inside. 
So here we'll, we'll do a sketch of the maze. All right, those design principles I was talking about, you got one entrance and all the rest of the channels, they're about a centimeter away from the top. We don't want the, we don't want it to be able to just open up without going through the maze. All right, selecting the whole sketch, you have to be in the surface tab for this part and you just extrude, extrude that. It's gonna be real thin. There we go. Doesn't matter how, how wide. And for this part, I'm thickening that line on both sides. So it's going to be symmetric, one millimeter on both sides. So we'll have two millimeter thick um, line there. And that's in the solids tab. Okay, this part, you'll see I clicked new body. Right there, I haven't connected this yet to that flat square that's the unwrapped cylinder. So it's it's the the cylinder that's unwrapped is separate from my thickened line. It's not going to matter yet, uh, but when I when I combine them, I'm not going to combine them. I'm going to extrude a cut the other direction. So I'm going to I'm going to select the faces of that maze and extrude it. And cut it. Now, since my cylinder is three thick, I cut it into it two. I build it up two and I cut it four. So, all right, right here I tried to join them, but when I made my maze, I forgot to include the edge there, that little tiny little edge I made. So it was closed. I wanted those to connect, so I had to push that through with an extrude function. It took me a while to actually select the right surface. Ah, right here. Okay, something important. If you're trying to work with Fusion 360 and you're a beginner, um, select function. You can select priorities or filters. Right here, I went to body faces because I didn't want I didn't want a line, an edge, or any part of this sketch. I wanted to select that little face. So I put body faces and that allowed me to select the piece I wanted and extrude it out. All right. So there refolded it. And then I'm going to I'm going to use the solid tab. I'm going to put a loft. And the loft just combines one face with another and that would do it. That will close up the cylinder. Okay. All right. So, because, let's see if I have this in a spot I can show you where I'm at. Okay. Because this is long right here, the tab is five in. And this on the screen here, we're looking at the very bottom. It comes out. So, I need another five millimeters of cylinder built onto this thing. So, I, I put a new sketch on the bottom of this. I'm going to just extend it five millimeters, um, actually eight, and then put a three millimeter top on it. So that's what I'm doing here. For me, it's just easier to create a new sketch on the surface and extrude from there. All right. Again, with all of those extrudes, um, you're using join. You're not doing new body. So you don't want a bunch of extra separate components. All right. So this part now, I'm going to be making the inside with the tab. Right now, I'm going to make it, I made the outer, the inner diameter of the maze 30. And uh, with the resin printer, sometimes you get a little extra resin drying on the outside or on the inside. So I actually like a, a one millimeter gap for 30 millimeters. Um, so I'm going to put 29 right there make it three millimeters thick so 29 and 26 and uh, then i'll make it 55 long because that's the inside okay so select that make it longer i'm a little new so there's a bunch of clicking around here trying to figure something out but 
what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take the cylinder and create a polygon around it. And I'm going to start on the lower side, the maze box side. All right. So I select the face, put a polygon on there, and I'm, f I'm using the fillet tool um, to um, wrap off all those edges. And since on this plane, when I connected my cylinder together, it didn't have a full circle. When I connected with the loft, it didn't close that circle on the sketch. So I had to actually create a circle so I could just select those corners. And I'm just going to drag that down with the extrude tool. Also, again, use the join 55, 58, not 55. And then here, right here, I'm going to select the edge of that polygon. And with, there's a, what is it, project, a project option um, for projecting it to any sketch plane you want. So I'm going to click the top plane here and I'm projecting it. So that just puts the polygon on the top. And since the inside's 55, I'm making this, it doesn't really matter how thick the bottom is, I think I made it 5 um, on, the, on this one. So there we go. We've got everything but the tab completed now. All right, this is me trying to figure out how to get the tab on there correctly again. <laughs> I've made this uh, many versions of this now. But uh, getting the tab on there is always a little tricky, depending on um, how you've started. So what I end up doing here is hiding the maze box. So I can see just the lid or the inside with the with the tab. And since I have five millimeters past here, I want the tab to start five millimeters and then go up two, almost two millimeters. That's how thick I made the uh, entrance to the maze. So I'm I'm selecting the there's the blue ring there. That's the that's the surface. I'm going five up from that and um, creating an offset plane. And that's under the construct tool. Also, you can click on your sketch and create an offset plane from there too, um, just with the right click. So I'm gonna put my sketch on that five millimeter offset plane. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the maze again so I can see my entrance. And there's my circle. Got to draw the circle so you've got a closed body here. And then select that piece. I'll extrude it up to, uh, actually I made it 1.9 so it would fit in. Little slop is actually good. Don't want it be, to be too tight. All right, now that component, I made a separate body. I didn't want to connect it to this piece yet because when everything's closed, I want these to line up completely. So I was finding uh, my exit, my exit hole, uh, pause. I'll bring it back here. All right, right here. That's my exit, not my exit, but the end of the maze. That's where the end of the maze shuts all the way. I'm not gonna go through the maze right now. So I'm rotating that piece around that axis so I can uh, oh sorry here we go all right so it was a separate body so I could rotate it and put it in the slot here yeah right there also, it helps if you learn how to use the different views. Okay, I'm gonna this, try and pause it where we're at. All right, nope, go back a little. Right here. So down here, visual style, shaded. That's how it originally starts. 
um, go down to wireframe wireframe and that will show you everything every edge every line in your drawing so you can find uh, where you're trying to work with on that lower spot and so I lined it up there and I know this this top piece when it's closed isn't going to be this isn't going to be a lining up crooked because when it's closed I want I want it to be perfectly lined up all right that was probably overkill on that but uh, that's important after I put that in the right spot I'll combine it so that's one body um, and one body you can you can export as an STL file so we're done now and that's that's pretty much it just wanted to move it around so it's not way up there all right so you can click on the body right click or you can click on it in the browser on the left side um, just export as STL file and uh, yeah that's about it any questions go ahead and leave a comment um, yeah thanks for watching there it is